G'day everyone, James here with JWN Lawn Care and Landscaping bringing you another video. Hello, hey, it's kind of dark. Where's, can you see my face? I hope so. Anyhow, I'm finally able to make a lot more videos now um, because the season's starting to slow down, so I'm not as busy. And also, um, <laughs> I'm actually transferring all these videos from that hard drive and this computer onto that hard drive, which I've just bought. This is a five terabyte hard drive, and you can see it's heating up a bit, so I've got my fan over it. Probably not going to do much, but anyhow, at least I tried. Um, yeah, so I've got over a terabyte of videos that are moving across because this whole system was just clagged up completely. Like, this computer is, like, nearly dead because I just had so much crap on it. Like, I've filled up that hard drive. I've filled up the computer's hard drive. I've filled up all my other USBs and everything. I was like, I don't have anywhere else I can put footage. So I've bought that entire 5 terabyte hard drive just for my videos. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to make some more. Um, happy Easter, because it's Monday today, the 13th of April, and so yesterday was Sunday, Easter Sunday, yes, yay. Um, I hope everyone had kind of a good little just break, um, nice few days off. It was very different, because especially, you know, being Italian, we're often very, what, family heavy, uh, especially around these kind of big events, like Easter, Christmas and everything, there when the whole family comes together, and this year, that was not to be. Uh, so it was, it was quite different, you know, I was really quiet. And um, usually we're over at my nonna's house and, you know, lots of lasagna and pasta and everything else. Um, not this year, unfortunately. I'm sure we'll make it up someday. Anyhow, um, it's a nice clear day. It's like, there's a helicopter coming. I think it's just a police one or an ambulance one. It's like no air traffic going at the moment. Everything's shut. It's just eerie, you know. Um, but we have to keep moving because, well, we can't stop. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'll give you all the, well, technically speaking, the 109.5 hour review of the Victor. Uh, I've just loaded it up into the trailer. There she is. Hello. Yeah, Ambos. Yeah. Um, I've just loaded it up because me and Connor are going out tomorrow, so uh, we didn't work today because it's a public holiday, but basically got a full week now Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday hoping not Saturday I think I think we should be done we should be all right um, but yeah packed week because um, we've got uni holidays at the moment now so that would normally take up Tuesdays and Thursdays but obviously because we don't have that I can work those extra couple of days which is nice so yeah I thought I'd let you know how this machine was going after 109.5 hours I was going to try and make it at 100 hours, but that didn't happen. Oh, 109.6. I'm sorry. I guess I racked up an extra little bit when I uh, drove it out here. Um, I mean, what can I say for the, what, four grand I paid for it? Um, she's been awesome. Like, it's dirty. It's done a lot of work. Um, it's It's been through some stuff these things aren't made to go through. And it still, it still goes. Um, so, I haven't replaced anything like I haven't had to put new of anything on this apart from the caster wheels I replaced those from the standard ones to the flat freeze um, but that's it everything else about this machine is original um, you can see the mulch mulch plate on here the chute blocker starts to it comes out a bit you know like that I can't need to fix that probably be fixed by just putting the extra bolt in but I can't be bothered, it works. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's done a lot of work. It's certainly paid for itself many times. Still all the original wheels. Like, um, oh, and this door comes down on me. Uh, and you can see, so this is a seven by five foot trailer. So seven feet long, five foot wide. And I've backed it, I always back it right up to the back. And uh, you got what about a foot, 
putting a bit at the front. So, um, yeah, you don't get much change out of it. Uh, Chris, who lives next door to me behind here, um, who runs his mowing business as well, doing commercial stuff, he has a 6x4 trailer, and he puts a 42-inch Toro like this one, just the little MX series, and it just fits by, like, millimetres. Um, so, yeah, I quite like this size. I can fit a 54 in here, um, but, yeah, that's, like, the very limit. So that's why I'm getting my new trailer, um, just so I can run more machines, because I still don't have anything that can transport the John Deere at the moment, which sucks. Uh, so I've got a whole bunch of equipment reviews coming out as well for you. Um, so I've been doing a few demos, so I just did a demo with Toro uh, last week, and the week before that I did a demo with Bobcat, and I'm doing actually the Toro guys bringing in another machine for me to demo sometime soon too, so... Um, I've demoed Hustler, I've demoed Bush Ranger, so all those videos are going to be coming up now that I've actually got some more time and some more space to actually save these videos, because they're not small, man. Like, even just the raw footage takes up like 15, 20 gigabytes on some of these, you know. Um, this, this GoPro, man, I've, I'm actually going to buy a new GoPro too. Let me know what you think. Um, Hero 8, I think it is. Um, if any of you run that, let me know your thoughts. I'm probably going to get that one. Um just as either a second GoPro to run as well, or also just, yeah. Um, but, what can I say? So, 109.6 hours. Um, let's run through it. So, um, you know, I believe this deck's fabricated, sort of. Like, it's it's kind of welded, but it's not really um, like a full commercial fabricated deck. Um, padded seat, it's comfortable enough, and it's got the springs on the back. So it does well for, I mean, the, the size of what it is and the speed that it can go, it's alright. If you go any bigger and faster, you really do want to start getting like an air ride seat or whatever. Um, but this one, honestly, for most of the work we do, it's mostly flat, it's alright. Uh, everything's pretty ergonomic. I believe the very top position here is a choke, like there. I believe that's choke, but I've never choked this machine. Uh, or maybe I have like once or twice just to see what it does, but um, I've, I've never had to start this machine with choke, really. Like, I just turn the key and it goes. Um, big fuel tank underneath, very handy, because it allows you to... Stop around and see. Um, fuel tank under there, I think it's like 12 litres, and I like that because it means I can... Um, low as you say a gravity a bit as opposed to having it in the sides uh, helps you balance a bit better too uh, and that's worked fine for me I have to you know jiggle the machine around a bit while I'm filling it up to get it up to the top uh, but it does all right uh, I will have to do this thing's 100 hourly service soon uh, I got the 50 hourly done on the BR700 even though it's at like 60 hours and the 50 hourly done on the FS91 because that hit 52 uh, the other week. So those two have had their 50s, this needs its 100. I don't know if I'll film it. Let me know if you want to see how to do a 100 hourly service on one of these. To be honest, I don't even know how to particularly do it, so I'll have to ask the wonderful uh, mechanical wizard of Rob, um, you know, get some parts for it and everything to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good machine. To be honest, I actually think for its price, and for its class, this is probably one of the best machines you can get. I know it's a bit of an out there claim, given there's like better brands like Hustler and um, Skag, Havana, um, all those sorts of brands, Bush Ranger, uh, that all have really good uh, zero turns as well. But to be honest, for the price and for the features, I think this is a really good option. Like you've got a pretty big engine, 23 horsepower Briggs and Stratton. Um, you've got the foot deck lift with your pin system. Um, you know, because a lot of a lot of residential machines uh, this size, like if if you have a foot deck lift, it's just you know a handle set the height like on the Toros, and then the pedal you still have to adjust it up and down each job though to lock it, um, or they've just got like the pedal. I know on some of the Gravelys they've got like the pedal, and then they've just got the pin, uh, but there's no lock. Whereas this actually has the proper commercial style um, system, which I really, really like. So it's still in two and a half inches. Um, all I did was I took this spring off to stop it from 
every time I push this down a little bit too much, it would lock back up. And so I'd just go to let it down and I'd have to flip it out inside. So just, uh, this suits me fine now. I just, you know, flip it out, let the deck down. Then I can push it up as high as I need to um, or leave it down for the job. And then I'm finished, flip it back, done. You know, very simple. I mean, if I do end up disliking that system for any reason, the spring's right there. I just hook it back on. Uh, this does get used mostly with the mulch plate on, um, you know, that 23 horsepower engine. Oh, you've got to see that split there, that's probably why it's um, coming apart on the front too. Um, so I need to weld that up. But, yeah, it, um, you know, it's got enough power to mulch most stuff, which is really good. Um, because especially in a lot of our tight residential yards here, I don't want to have the discharge chute open. Uh, it's just too risky. But if need be, I can. Dual cup holder, so I just, you know, I don't really put anything in this, just bits and pieces, rubbish or whatever I pick up. Uh, I keep my little tool here for, um, this helps me. Um, if I can't unscrew sometimes the nut that's on top of uh, there to remove the mulch plate gets like too tight. Um, so I have this to help loosen it. Uh, you got your fuel gauge there, not very reliable. Like it says, we're just about empty and we're over half full. Um, but I don't really care. Like that's the beauty of it being uh, like that. I can actually just look at it. Whoa. So I can see from either side of the seat, you know. You can look down the side, see how much is in there, give it a bit of a jiggle. You can tell where the level's at. Easier to remove foot plate, just access to all your belts and everything. That's all pretty open. I've taken the covers off um, just so I can blow them out easier. Keeps it all clean. Um, you do have grease points on this, which is good because uh, a lot of residential machines are sealed. Um, so you've got grease points in there and there uh, on, on the deck. I've mainly just done these ones to stop them squeaking. I actually do need to grease the spindles and everything too. I'll have to do that soon. Uh, I'll do that with the 100 hourly, I suppose. Um, and yeah, I don't know what's happening with those arms. Need to fix them up too. Um, that's not too much of an issue. I'm actually going to order a new seat for my John Deere as well, um, just because the suspension's gone in it and it's all torn up underneath. But yeah, so overall, if you're starting out in the business and you need a little, uh, a little ride on, um, I definitely recommend getting a zero turn um, because uh, they're not that much more expensive than a lawn tractor and they've got so much more capability. Uh, you usually get a bigger engine in them. Um, you get way more steering capability. Um, you know, like yes, the the McCulloch I had, the lawn tractor, which still runs at our farm, um, that I used um, earlier on in my business, that worked, but there was a lot of fiddling around. So the time you saved by using a ride-on was kind of lost again in having to do all these 20 point turns to get around these yards um, but this I love um, so if you are starting out or you're starting out in ride-on mowing or you want to transition because you have a lot of residential yards but they're kind of bigger um, and you want you want to get something a bit a bit larger into them to get those jobs done faster I, I'd highly recommend one of these piss off bloody mozzy thing um you know i think you can get them for about six grand new um so they're pretty good price you know um it's pretty competitive again it's got a lot of features that you your um your more commercial grade zero turns will have as well uh, so for the price point i reckon it's it's um pretty unbeatable really uh, it fits into a lot of gates that's why i love it because this basically has eliminated push mowing from my business. Like I've just got the 19 inch Honda in there uh, in the front mailbox and that's it. That hardly gets touched, you know. Um, and the couple that oh, I can't get this into, I'll normally use the 30 inch on now too, the Toro. So I've kind of covered all my bases with these, which is great. Um, you know, that's it's changed my business a lot. It's meant we can get through a lot more jobs. Uh, a lot faster so I'm really happy but yeah that's an overview of the Victor um, I've I've loved it it's done everything I need it to do obviously it's not built for the work I'm doing uh, but it's a machine that can start you out and get you going you know 
And I think that's what's important. And that's what it's done for me. It started me out, it got me going with right on mowing. Um, so, you know, now it's time to move on and move up. And that's what I'm doing. But, you know, realistically, like I can't, I can't complain, guys. Um, by the end of this year, I reckon this machine will mostly be retired. Um, because most of the jobs that I can do with this, I can do with a 60 inch as well. So I just use a 60. Uh, this would, yeah, not get very much attention. Um, so look, you know, 100 hours on these, nothing really. Uh, I've got mates that have run over 3,000 hours on their uh, petrol zero turns and no problems. And as you would have seen, that John Deere, it's, um, it's just racked up past 4,900. So they can run. But, yeah, just look after them, you know. So I've always kept this thing clean, really. I mean, I've actually probably not done as much on it as I should have. But even still, it, it runs perfectly fine. I have no dramas with this, uh, usually. Um, you know, I've only ever had a couple of minor problems with it um, that were easily rectified. So, yeah, um, for, for the price point, this is a really, really solid machine. Um, it is... Uh, a copy of the uh, Ferris S65Z. You might notice the similarities and everything. So it's, it is literally one of those, just um, with Victor plastered on the front instead of Ferris. Um, and I think the S65 might have the suspension on the front, but I don't think it has the back. Uh, I know there's one or two of their low-end models don't have suspension. I can't remember which one it is, but it might be this one. Because, um, yeah, it's literally the same thing, but it's a lot cheaper, you know. I think it's a good two, three grand cheaper just for not having the Ferris logo on it. <laughs> and that shows you what brands do. Anyhow, in other news, we're going to have something pretty exciting coming up if I can actually get onto the shop tomorrow. Um, so, I've got a call up um, the guys where I bought my Honda from and see uh, if they'll get me a backpack blower. Mm. What's it going to be, Nank? Oh, well, you'll have to wait and see. Um, because I may get one. It's just going to be lit. Um, it's kind of a spur of the moment decision. I've been saying to uh, kids like James from Legendary Landscape, and, you know, a few other kids I talk with, always do your cost benefit analysis on your purchases. Um, and, you know, still stands with this cost benefit analysis, very important. Um, have I done one for this this uh, this blower? Yes. Um, is it fully justified? Sort of. Like I don't really need it, but um, I'm doing it for a couple of reasons, right? And so um, the fact that I can uh, get it very easily and at a good price is one helping factor, and also it will be a nice help when we have you know wet grass and everything in um, as we gain to winter here it's kind of autumn at the moment um, but yeah so hopefully that's going to be sorted tomorrow i might take you guys along for the ride um how many have we got i don't know we've got a pretty booked up day but what day is it oh yeah we got a bunch tomorrow so we've got three body corporates, four body corporates to do, geez, so tomorrow's actually mostly a body corporate day, um, so we got body corporates, then Wednesday, uh, we have just general garden stuff, um, like just kind of mid-sized lawns, oh, and another body corp then, uh, Thursday we've got a hedge reduction job, that's going to be interesting, Friday we've just got a couple of larger properties and that's it, so, alright week. That's not bad. Oh, no, I do have a couple on Saturday to do, yeah. All right. Um, that's okay. Huh? That can't be right. Oh, I'll have to move her back. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so the schedule's slowly filling up, guys. Uh, even through this whole virus thing, uh, we still are gaining some more customers. So um, I've picked up a few new ones uh, in recent times, which is great. Um, because, you know, you do need new customers. Uh, you need to, you know, keep building your business. And so I'm glad I've been able to do that. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see uh, what happens in the kind of knock-on of all this. 
let's just have a look. So we got made this one on Saturday. Um, you've seen this one before. It's just one of my neighbour's properties. Pretty easy. A few little shoots on it. Not too much. These trees have come back really well. You remembered ages ago. We did a really hard cut back on this tree and that tree. And they've, they've come up really nicely over time. It's been about a year, I think. Yeah. But they have actually done really, really good. Um, so you can see all the all the leaves, all the, the idea that we had when we actually pruned this tree was that all the leaf matter would kind of be condensed down a bit lower. And that's what's happened on both of them. Um, so we got all the kind of main shoots happening on the lower branches, which is what we wanted. Um, because the, the issue we had with these trees had just gone away from the poor guy and all the branches were up way too high. So now we've actually pulled it down, all the growth's coming out from there. And so we do the same technique with hedge reductions too. Uh, we just try and pull everything down so then when it bushes back, uh, it's, it's lower and it's easier for people to deal with. Uh, but even like this tree here, like you've literally only got branches on this side, like you can see all open. Um, you know, and that's what happens when you've got uh, a tree that stands so tall they actually do kind of push the branches out of the way of one another. Let's have a quick look at how this backyard's looking. Also, just as goodwill to these these customers, I just like to keep an eye on their house because uh, they're not, not always here. So, I just go around and make sure uh, nothing's happened, you know, everything's still in good order because uh, one day I came through and they'd um, someone had tried to break in and uh, this is what I love too like so I can get the victor through here just so I think of it so I made this whole place with the victor now um, yeah could do with a mow yeah that'll be fine for, for Saturday I love doing these edges so good um, yeah that's all from me it's some um, funny times we're in now Everything's just so quiet. Uh, the, the kind of the effects of, of this thing is, um, I guess, not really what anyone had ever expected. You know? uh, so no one ever say that one person can't change the world because <laughs> they can, <laughs> um, and we're seeing that right now. So yeah, that's all from me. That's a bit of a review of the Victor. Um, she's still doing a lot of work uh, and while I don't have the trailer for uh, the John Deere I'm still doing most of my jobs really um, because to try and hire a trailer for um, you know all these other um, jobs I do it's just it's not worth it so I figure given I can do most of them with the Victor still I'm kind of better off doing that because yeah, by the time I hire a trailer and everything, it gets too, you know, I'll lose the money. Um, which is why I really want to get this trailer done, but... You guys aren't doing any more of that for the moment until this virus is blown over. Which is annoying. Because it means I have to wait longer, which I don't like. But, what can you do, right? This is life. Deal with it as it comes. Anyhow, um... Let me know what you think about the Victor. I've loved it. I think it's a really good machine. Um, I've also got some Darwin's Grips trimmer racks while well, I think they're coming. The bloody Australia Post will actually pull their heads in and get deliveries out because they've delayed it three times so far. <laughs> Your order's been delayed. Yeah, no shit, mate. <laughs> no point telling me that after it's been delayed for like a week. Jesus. Anyhow. Um, our lawn's coming up nicely. It's looking really good filling in with that perennial ryegrass. Um, but yeah, tell us what you think about the Victor. Have you got one? Um, have you got a machine that's similar? What do you think of it? Um, let us know. Anyhow, that's all for me from the moment. Peace in the Middle East. Donate bats. Be good to your customers. They'll be good to you. See you in the next one.